I really wanted to finish Bruce Wayne's story. We'd, we'd done two acts of a three-act story, in, in a sense, and the challenge for me was to really figure out the reason to take another trip to, to Gotham City and to invite the audience to, to take that with us. Once we'd really figured out where our story went, where it wound up, uh, what Bruce's conclusion is, in a sense, then it became something I had to do and, and really wanted to show to the world. And, that's what we've done and that's where we are. The end of The Dark Knight left the characters in a, in a pretty interesting place. I felt very strongly we're trying to make one unified story here, so it's not another you know, episode, in, not another Batman episode, if you like. For me, that meant really trying to be true to where the characters were left. And Bruce Wayne, as Batman, has made a rather large sacrifice at the end of The Dark Knight. For that to mean something, he really has to have succeeded, in a sense, in his mission. He has to have a Gotham that, at least superficially, doesn't need Batman anymore. And that leaves him frozen, in a sense. And the eight-year period is about showing that he's retired, in a sense. He's hung up his cape and his cowl. But he hasn't been able to move on. He's, he's stuck. And uh, the jumping off point for the story really is how can this person who has become disconnected, who is in a sort of self imposed exile from society, how can he reconnect with life? We'd had a great experience shooting in IMAX on The Dark Knight, and we wanted to expand that on The Dark Knight Rises and shoot more of the film that way, and we had. We shot almost half of the film using those cameras. Seeing that projected on an IMAX film screen is a very unique experience, and I hope people will seek it out where it's available, uh, because it really gives you that extra image quality, that extraordinary clarity and immersive quality that, that really throws you into the world of the film. That, for me, uh, is, is just a great thrill in terms of how you experience a, a large-scale action film. Well, there are a couple of people in the film, uh, Marion Cotillard and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who I'd worked with in Inception, who I really wanted to, to work with again because they're just incredible talents. Uh, Tom Hardy also I'd worked with in Inception, and he felt to me the obvious choice for somebody who would take on the challenge of portraying this, this monstrous, monstrous character who expresses all kinds of evil and, and malevolent intent, really just through his eyes, because his, his face is mostly obscured with a mask, uh, his eyes and his voice, and, and Tom was very much up for the challenge of presenting a face of evil uh, in, in that way. And I think what he's done is going to be very threatening to audiences in a way they're not used to seeing.